Hello, my name is Anna, and this is a video that I've been wanting to put on YouTube for a really long time. Um, it's about um, having a miscarriage and dealing with a blighted ovum. So if you are experiencing a blighted ovum at the moment, or you got this diagnosis at the doctor, perhaps your first ultrasound appointment, and I'm really glad that you found this, um, it can be a great uh, source of information. Um, I also wanted to say that this is just my experience. Everybody has a different experience um, with dealing with such um, such trauma, I guess. So basically, when you find out you're pregnant, you make an appointment to go in to your doctor about anywhere eight weeks, nine weeks after you get the positive. And that's your first ultrasound, and it's called a dating ultrasound. And they check to make sure you have an embryo, there's a heartbeat, and potentially um, they can estimate your due date. So during the first eight weeks, um, you think you're pregnant, you have a positive um, blood test even, and you really experience a lot of symptoms. You might have swellness or swelling or tenderness in your breasts and just maybe a little bit of nausea. Um, it kind of depends, everybody's different. So then, um, for me, for example, um, my fiance and I went in for our first appointment and we did a um, intravaginal ultrasound, which is most likely what you'll have that early on because they can't detect it at the tummy at that, that time. And um, they take some pictures and usually the ultrasound technician won't tell you what they see right away. They wait until after the probe is out and then they tell you um, kind of what they find out. So in the event of a blighted ovum, which is what I had, she says that there, she told me that there was a gestational sac with no embryo. And I had no idea this was even a thing. I knew there was miscarriages. I knew that possibly there wouldn't be a heartbeat. And I knew that, you know, my, a friend of mine had an, an uh, eptopic pregnancy where it grows in a fallopian tube. So there's a bunch of different types of miscarriages. This one I had never heard about. So of course I ran home and I researched it after, you know, crying a bit in the car. Um, so what happens with an, um, a uh, blighted ovum? Um, or an, an embryonic pregnancy, if that's something you want to research as well, it's the same, it's the same word, um, is that the egg fertilizes and when the cells are splitting and um, kind of, so there's one cell that where one egg gets fertilized and then it splits many, many different times. Um, it just dissolves and it kind of just fades away because of chromosomal problems. So your body detects those really early on and realizes that it's not a viable pregnancy. So you end up having a gestational sac with no embryo. And I have a little picture pulled up of just what that could look like. This is just kind of a Google search. So you see the, um, actually that's not a good one. <laughs> Let's see this one. Okay, so you see there's a, a black dead space. And if you had a baby in there or an embryo, it would look something like this. So you would have a little little nugget and then in a best case scenario it would have a little like a little white flashing heartbeat. So the blighted ovum is nothing ever started to develop. develop. Um, if you're very scientific and you appreciate biology like I did um, I guess you just kind of appreciate that your body realized this early on and, you know, did something about it before it was too late, before you were too invested in the pregnancy. Um, and then, so what I did is I went home and kind of grieved for a little bit. Um, I called a bunch of my friends, not a bunch of my friends, but a few of my friends. I reached out to them because they had had miscarriages and I just said, how did you deal with this? What did you do? And a lot of them were just like, cry, like take as much time as you need. Don't go to work. Just do what you need to do in order to um, just have like a grieving period for yourself. And, um, you know, I just kind of tried that. And then I, you know, so basically at the doctor, they want you to come back in a week to make sure that they didn't miss anything. There have been times that I've read on forums and different 
uh, chat groups about ablated ovum where they couldn't see it they couldn't see anything and then the person went back about a week or two later and then there was uh, an embryo with a heartbeat um, that is a completely different scenario that means that potentially they were earlier than they thought so maybe they went in at like five weeks for the ultrasound and then they couldn't see it and so they thought there was nothing in the gestational sac but there actually was so the doctor has you go back um, about a week later possibly even another week later um, to confirm that it is in fact a blighted ovum so in my case um, I went in we went in thinking that we were nine weeks. So first ultrasound, nine weeks. My gestational sac was measuring only at six and a half weeks. There was also no embryo. Those are two really big signs that I'm I'm having this miscarriage. We went in a week later, still no growth. Um, and then it's time to talk about options. The, here are your options when you have a blighted ovum. And again, this is completely, there's, I, I asked the doctor, there's really no one option that's better, safer, um, more widely used. It's completely 100% up to you. Up to you if your partner wants to be involved, great, but it is completely up to you. So the first one is you can miscarry naturally. That means you wait for your body to recognize that it's not a viable pregnancy and you miscarry naturally. You start bleeding, you start cramping and you eventually pass the sac. Timing for that is very, um, uh, uh, very random. So you could start, you could have symptoms at work, you could have symptoms at the night, at nighttime. Um, for me, that wasn't ever an option. If you want to do something naturally and you want your body to pass it naturally, having a natural miscarriage is one of your options. The second option is getting um, a, a pill to assist. Um, I don't remember the name of the pill right now, but maybe I will later. You you uh, put it up intravaginally, so it goes into your body, and it triggers a miscarriage, or it triggers your body uh, eliminating what is in the what the gestational sac. Um, my friend, I have a friend who did that during her miscarriage. Um, it ended up not working, and so she had to go back in and have a procedure done, which is option three. But I'll touch a little bit more on option two, the pill. Um, I've heard many different stories about reading about this online, that it takes hours, maybe days, for your body for it to kick in, for your body to recognize it. Um, so I guess if you want to do it naturally, but you don't want to wait and you want to take the pill, you know, having a few days or a, many days off work, um, I just read that it's pretty agonizing that you kind of just experience. But again, that is completely up to you. Your decision if that having that natural process is really important for you to um, move on or move past um, the fact that you're having a miscarriage. Um, the third option is having a DNC, dilage and or dil, dil, dilation and curatage. Um, a DNC is a procedure where they dilate the cervix and basically go in and scoop things out, for lack of a better term. Um, uh, and the DNC procedure um, can be done one under anesthesia, two very heavily medicated. Or I guess three, if you're a superwoman, <laughs> then no medication at all. Um, so I did some research and I chose for me that the DNC was the best option. Only because I work Monday through Friday, I had kind of a busy schedule. I didn't really want to take a pill and just wait around for a few days and then start bleeding. I just really wanted this to be done with because it... In the end, at the end of the day, the quicker you can recover your body and get back to your cycle, you can start trying again to have a baby, and that was really important for me. So, I scheduled a DNC. I also opted to have no anesthesia, and it was more just kind of a, a financial insurance thing. But I did opt for having um, medication. So, I scheduled my DNC. 
Um, my, my fiance, now husband, drove me to the hospital. An hour before, I took a Vicodin and a Percocet. And I was really anxious and I kind of, I felt fine actually like right before I laid on the table and I thought, nothing's kicking in, you know, the medicine's not working, I can feel everything. Um, but I, I, I didn't feel everything. Um, the procedure itself only takes about 10 minutes, um, but it is a long 10 minutes. So my sort of, what I did was laid on the table, my fiance was there, he held my hand. I put a black towel over my eyes just because I wanted to zone out. I didn't want them to kind of, I know a lot of doctors are kind of checking in like, how are you doing? Are you okay? And I just, you know, I didn't want to hear anything. I didn't want to like see anything or I, I just wanted to zone out. So I put, I put a mask or a towel over my eyes. Um, I even had them turn on, uh, had a little bit of music. So, um, so basically the 10 minutes of getting the DNC, you can feel there's a, a needle that they use to inject your cervix with a numbing solution. It's probably the same thing they might put in your teeth. I don't know, Novocaine but, <laughs> or something. So um, that needle uh, is weird and it kind of stung. The only, the other thing that I really noticed was as soon as I got that um, shot, I had this rush of adrenaline to my heart and it was like my heart was beating so fast and it was like thumping and it was pounding out of my chest which is really weird when you take a Vicodin because Vicodin is supposed to like slow down your heart rate and let you relax and then it was almost as if like you stay up for like 36 hours and you drink a bunch of caffeine kind of that feeling so it was really uncomfortable um, that was the most uncomfortable part of it um, because I couldn't get my heart rate down and it kind of scared me but I just tried to breathe through it and relax and um, kind of by the time my heart rate went down the procedure was done so that kind of you know worked out um, then I uh, so I went home I took that day off work um, I think it was a Friday so I had the whole weekend to recover um, I wore a very light like panty liner for maybe three days I had minimal bleeding that was my experience with this DNC which is why I'm kind of an advocate for this if people are teetering between the three options um, again your body might be different I had minimal bleeding I rested on the couch I had minimal cramping I think I used maybe a little a hot pad or um, one of those like socks stuffed with rice like you can heat up in the microwave to kind of help some of the cramping um, but all in all, I recovered pretty well, really well indeed. So actually I had my procedure on a Thursday. I think that following Sunday I went and took a yoga class and I was even able to go in my yoga clothes and not have to like wear a weird panty liner because you can't, you can't wear tampons. Um, and that I had my DNC on a Thursday and I remember you just, after that your body, you just, you just wait and you were going to recovery and go about your days and your life. And I got my period exactly six weeks from the day of my DNC procedure. So exactly six weeks later, um, then you can go into charting again and taking your temperature and anything you need to do or anything you were doing um, to try to conceive. So, um, yeah, after my period, did we conceive? I don't know. I guess we'll find out next video. I hope you guys, um, I hope this helps. If you have any questions, um, if you're dealing with a DNC, or sorry, <laughs> dealing with a blighted ovum, leave, um, you know, if you need to reach out or comment below. There's also a really great Facebook group called uh, Angel Moms of Blighted Ovum babies I think and if you've experienced um, a blighted ovum then you can join the group um, it is there for support it's not a group to post um, pregnancy announcements if that happens after you miscarry just kind of a warning they want to keep it you know very uh, they want to be very careful to not um, to not you know make the other members sad or you know there's just no distaste so there's other sites where you can shout loud and clear that if you're pregnant again or whatever so that again is the experience of a DNC or a, a blighted ovum 
Um, if you have anything to say in the comments, please. Thanks.